Thank you, sir. So after a few days, again the cat is disturbing in a class. So the teacher tells students, go and tie the cat. So this repeated two, three times. So then the students started doing, anyway this cat is going to disturb, so let us might as well tie it before we start the class. Because otherwise the teacher is always asking, go and tie in the middle of the class, it is getting dis is disturbing us. So the students now started tying the cat before the class starts. So it became a practice. So every day before the class starts, now the cat is being tied. Slowly this practice passed on for a few months. After a few months later, the teacher, the monk, moved on and the new monk came. But the students are just tying the cat. Few days later, the students also slowly changed. New students came. But the new students came, nobody knows why they're tying the cat. All they know is they have to go and then tie the cat. Because they started believing that the cat is important to be tied every class. So a few days later, the cat died. So when the cat died, the students decided to go and buy a new cat and then bring a new cat and they start tying the cat again. So what do you understand from this? It's a blind belief. So anything that is done over a period of time, nobody understood the joke? The cat died, so they went and bought a new cat to do just to tie it. Whether it is disturbing or not, doesn't matter. But it became a practice, it became a ritual, it became a belief. Nobody came forward and questioning, why are you tying the cat? What is the need? Nobody questioned. All they were doing was, okay, so my previous seniors were doing it, so I have to do it. That's all. The teacher, new teacher came, he never questioned because, okay, people are doing it. So always, maybe the previous teacher told, so he's just they're tying it. Whatever that we've been told again and again, we form as a belief. We don't question. And then now in science is telling us that whatever we think, whatever beliefs we form is what we think and project. For example, when you are appearing for exams, you say that now each of us have a tough subject. We all have a tough subject. The subject is very tough for you. And so, meditation is fundamentally a very, very scientific process. National education policy inserted meditation under the gamut of something called emotional learning. You can achieve something, but if you want to really grow in life, the emotional intelligence is important. And meditation is providing that emotional intelligence. Meditation is providing many more things very, very scientifically. And one of the core principles of meditation is to create whatever that you want, attract whatever that you want. And then the only reason we're not able to attract is because of our beliefs. You want to pass exams in flying colors, but then you have this belief because you fail or you scored less in two, three times, then you feel that, okay, I'm not good. Can we clap? Clap. Clap. Just follow me. Clap again. How about this? Do it. You can't do it? Can't do it? Why not? What is stopping you? All right, friends. Meditation practice is to enjoy life to the fullest. I was told, I used to think, meditation is to renounce everything. Meditation is to, is only for people who are very old. Only for people who are very sick, where they can't do anything, their medical science does not heal, so you can go for meditation. This is how I used to also think before, but it's the biggest myth I've learned. Meditation, when it is taken early on, and like I've decided, I've, I've figured out in my life too, 
I used to have a lot of fears. My mom always told, don't go out of the house after 9 o'clock in the night. 9 o'clock later, oh, it is not safe, don't go out. But then when I came into, so I never went out, I never explored outside. Even though I've been traveling around the world, after 9 dark, I never explored outside. But after coming to meditation, I started going, driving at 11 in the night for an ice cream and then go out and do it. Before meditation, when rain comes, what do we do? All of us, what do we do when rain comes? What do you do when rain comes? Do you play in the water or do you run into inside home? What has been told? We run inside home. But after meditation, I realized if I'm enjoying sun, if I'm enjoying winter, I enjoy rain also. So go in and play in the rain. Meditation breaks a lot of unscientific beliefs. And so meditation, what I figured, is to experience life more. Whatever that have been limitations are there. Saying that don't do this, don't do that, this is not what you are, or you are not good. All of those beliefs are slowly, slowly break away when we practice meditation. And as a result, we become, we experience our life more. You go to a trekking, you all go for trekkings. If you are fearful of trekking, now you do trekking. If you are fearful of exams, now with meditation it becomes so easy because it removes all the fear. How many people have fear of darkness where you can't go out? How many people have fear of exams where you feel you forget it? How many people you fear about a specific teacher or a principal or somebody, professor or lecturer who is very difficult, strict? Meditation helps to remove all the fears. So this practice which I took it in my life when I was very young, 20 years ago, but not as young as you. But I took it very early on, still when I was 30. And I took, in the moment I got onto it, I realized the benefits, immense benefits. I was living in the United States, and then the doctors were telling that I had an ear, nose, throat condition. Automatically, the condition healed. That medical condition, where doctors told me I have to take medication, lifelong has healed. So meditation is fundamentally healing any problem. Whether it is gynec issue, whether it is migraine issue, whether it is digestion issue, whatever that is, meditation is providing great, great health. And of course, it's clearing fear. So let's go through a few minutes of what meditation can do scientifically and then practice a bit. Right? So if what you see in the picture, right? So you see, lot of leaders are practicing meditation worldwide. In India, in abroad, Lot of successful leaders, very successful business leaders. We have here CBA director. We have Bannari Aman Group companies, one of the leading industries outside in South India companies. We have here Steve Jobs. How many of you know Apple? Steve Jobs is the founder of Apple. He came to India, learned meditation in 1970s, and then he went back and the whole life he practiced meditation. No wonder how you get all these cool devices from Apple, right? Apple phones and all that. Then you have Microsoft. You heard of Microsoft? Computers. Bill Gates is practicing meditation now. So there is nobody who is not practicing meditation. It is there with all successful people. Right? Do you all know Mahatma Gandhi used to carry Bhagavad Gita in his hand always? So he was practicing. He knew going into the quietness is a very important tool. Right? Go next. So many companies, as you go along, you will realize that many companies, the company I came from, IBM, Meditation is an integral part. IBM hiring people today, where you say, I am meditation, I am a meditator. It recognizes meditation as a success skill. Google has a course for employees. You all want to go into good jobs, right? You want to go into a good institutes and good education institute. Now Harvard, Oxford, any of these IAMs, Indian IAMs, all of them are introduced meditation as a practice to the students because they believe that meditation can do wonders to everybody. So what you're seeing, dear friends, is a worldwide phenomena of top companies, small to big, or top universities, top leaders, everybody is practicing meditation because they recognize it can give many benefits. What can it give? So you heard of emotional intelligence. Physical intelligence, PQ, physical quotient, so your health fundamentally becomes strong, glowing, radiant. 
So what you see on the chart, meditation is providing your health, physical quotient, emotional intelligence, so great relationships. How many of us have challenges with making friends? If somebody says something, we feel very bad about it. We don't, we go into a loop, we start going into a mood. When you go there and say, hey, don't disturb me, I'm in a mood, somebody don't bother about me. We mind for small things to big things. Meditation is giving us excellent emotional intelligence, your relationships become great. Meditation is helping increase your thought power, so you create things, whatever that you want in your life. We'll hear some stories afterwards, after we practice meditation, how students are able to greatly succeed in their academics. You know, one student recently in the pandemic time, she lost her parents in COVID. She was completely in a disarray. She was completely leaving studies because she just could not, she could not take it. She started practicing meditation for three weeks later, in the first program she did three weeks and then she slowly understood what has, has happened. She cannot really spoil her life, future. Some things may happen. So in the second program, by the time it comes in two months later, now she is actively working towards our future now. She is absolutely landing onto her, focused on her next studies, higher studies. Earlier otherwise she is almost giving up her studies, now she came back completely. Meditation is helping us detach from our past. Past can be any bad, it doesn't matter. It could be friends created, it could be you know, environment created, parents created, who are created, but it helps us to detach from it. And then so that we can focus on our current, what is important for us. So meditation is increasing a understanding, spiritual quotient, where how do you increase your happiness? You know, when you hear people, they say there's a lot of peace, a lot of calmness, a lot of no stress, all of that meditation helps us to understand. So it is a holistic process. What is that you gain? We all carry stress. Exams are there, stress is there. When stress is there, your health is going bad. Meditation is helping you to remove the stress. From stress, you become joyful. Blaming people, instead you start taking ownership. Our thoughts create reality. So, instead of saying that, okay, it's because of you, I didn't win. It's because of you, I couldn't get it. Rather than blaming other people, we start taking ownership, drug responsibility. Everything is going to happen most naturally. With meditation, where you feel, I don't have resources, scarcity to abundance. A lot of times we blame, right? We blame parents, we blame our situations and say, I'm not, I don't have the way that you have it. But we recognize that is a scarcity. We feel, I don't have it. But quantum physics is saying, our Vedic principle said, everybody has enough. It is only how you think and feel is what you can create. So it changes your mindset. So from scarcity, you move into an abundance. That means you can win, you can succeed, you can grow, you can score those great marks, you can come out in flying colors from the programs, are your goals, whatever. It is there for everybody. Meditation moves us into that state. So from your old self, just by practicing what you're going to do right now for a few minutes a day, you can really become magical and miracle, miraculous. Just by doing this simple practice. And that's why, whether Ratan Tataji, you all know, Prime Minister Narendra Modi, he does meditation and yoga for 90 minutes. We all think that I don't have time. But if he is doing it, and many students are doing it, old to young, everybody is doing it. So we have to ask ourselves, if Bill Gates is doing it, and everybody is so very business people, busy people are doing it. So when you say, I can't do it. So that is something to ask, because the benefits are enormous, dear friends. Let's go to the next one. So, some of the benefits that we have seen practically. So, we have seen, when we had surveys we have done, because people who practice meditation, what do we see? 70% of the people, if suppose somebody has migraine headache, somebody has digestion problem, gastric troubles, whatever problems that are there, now if you have knee aches, you know, you, you hurt yourself when you are playing games, 
you know, we have problems, any health issues, any kind, our BP and sugar, if parents are prior going through that, and any of those, and 70% of the people are healing just in three weeks of meditation. They heal without medication. I gave up medication in the year 2002. Today we are in 2021. Now, 20 years later, I am very happy to say I didn't have to rely on any medicine at all. How many have to take medicines when you have some challenge? How many have to take medicines? I didn't have to take any medication for the last 20 years, no matter what it is, because meditation heals, right? So we see that. 90% of the people said now they are totally confident about their life. After three weeks of meditation, they say they are super confident, their life is, they are really, really know that how they can make their life, they mold their life. Because meditation gives us that empowerment to that no, I can create my outcome, my reality the way I want it. That's what it does, my friends. Go to the next slide. So, let's do, what is this meditation? How do you do this meditation? Go one more. Okay. So, I want us to practice a bit of meditation. We'll come back to the science again after I practice it. So, meditation is very simple. So, this practice is to empty your mind. Just the way you're sitting. You don't have to take fresh, you know, bath and this and that. You don't have to sit on the floor, what you see in the pictures. All you do is to just sit comfortably where you are, right? Take your back support. Cross your feet at ankle. As you see in the uh, person sitting in the chair, that's exactly the posture. Cross your feet at the ankle, right? Fingers into fingers. Cross your, put your fingers into fingers. Hands comfortably in your lap. Hands in your lap, right? And then if you're wearing specs, remove the specs. And then close your eyes. So our goal is to emptying the mind. And how do you empty the mind? First we are closing the eyes. Fingers into fingers, resting hands comfortably in lap, crossing feet. We do this to still the body. We have to still the body. We want to empty the mind, so we have to still the body and then still the mind. Stilling the mind is first still the body and then we observe our breath. We all are breathing right now. We breathe, we breathe 15 times a minute. So you know you're breathing, you don't recognize that you're breathing. So our goal is to observe that natural breath. So with our eyes closed, specs removed, all I want you to do is to observe your natural breath, your in-breath and out-breath. Where do you observe? Anywhere in the nose, preferably here. Inside, observe your air is going in and coming out. Cold air is going in, warm air is coming out. Some people will realize it. But all you want to do is to observing your natural breath. It's called anapanasati. That means observing in-breath and out-breath. When we observe our breath, our mind becomes empty. How many thoughts we have? 50,000 thoughts a day. 50,000 thoughts. You know how many are actually useful in that? Not even 5,000. 90,000, remaining 45,000 are useless thoughts. You know, about how things didn't work for you yesterday. How, you know, somebody passed away so you feel bad about it. Or you talk about traffic, you talk about politics, you talk about this and that. It has no value to you at all. But every thought is energy. That's quantum physics, that's neuroscience. Every thought is energy. So we lose a lot of energy. So meditation is helping us to eliminate all unwanted thoughts. So all we are doing is closing our eyes and observing your natural breath. You don't have to do any other practice. You don't have to forcefully breath, no forceful breathing. Just observing your natural breath, all right? So let's do this practice. I want you to just now relax yourself, sit comfortably. So I'll be playing some music, I'll guide. Your job is to observe the breath. As you observe the breath, slowly mind becomes empty. You will know it, slowly thoughts start coming down. As the thoughts start coming down, you start experiencing total emptiness. In that emptiness, you start receiving energy, so you might see any sensations in the body. In that emptiness, you receive energy, so you may have sensations in the body. So just be a witness to it. If you are receiving energy, you feel your body is shaking, you feel body is becoming light, or you are seeing some vision, just see, witness, don't interpret, don't analyze, be a witness to it. In case you have thought, which will happen a lot, then bring your attention back to the breath again. So if you have thoughts, come back to attend to the breath again. Again, observe the breath slowly, mind becomes empty, and then be in that empty state. So our goal is to be in that state of emptiness. So I would like you to close your eyes, dear friends, at this time. And then until I say, okay, please, and then you may open your eyes, you not open the eyes. So we're going to practice for a few minutes of this practice. Relax yourself, sit comfortably. With your fingers into fingers, eyes closed, Specs removed, dear friends. With your fingers into fingers.
friends at this time i would like you to express gratitude give thanks to all things and everybody in your life to your parents to your teachers your mentors to all the people in your life your family your friends your colleagues your relatives be grateful to this grand nature the bird the fish and the animals express gratitude to all the things you use the technology your institutes your companies your governments and be grateful to yourself for caring for you for caring for others grateful to this intelligent universe for allowing you to experience so much more in this life our thoughts create our reality the more grateful you can be for things that you have in your life the more you attract the same and more you can keep your hands on your eyes for 5 seconds keep your hands on your eyes for 5 seconds and then you can open your eyes that's great before we close the session what you practice today you practice for about 18 minutes all you have to do every day is just that much how many of you felt heaviness in your body rakesh can you put the slide and experiences how many of you have felt heaviness in your body or lightness in your body you can raise your hand if anybody felt light or heavy in your body anybody would like to share one experience can you share mark kodu idira how you felt en anustho e anustho anadare kelbekalva gandmaklu eltira gandmaklu yara gelalva okay let me ask these questions right so you see the slide how many felt lightness in the body you can raise your hand if you felt no come on if you if you felt any of those it's good ನಿಮ್ಮ ದೇಹ ಹಗುರವಾಗಿತ್ತು ಅಂತ ಯಾರ್ಯಾರು ಅನಿಸಿದ್ರೆ ಎಲ್ಲರೂ ಕೈಯಿತ್ತಿ ಮೆಡಿಟೇಷನ್ ಮಾಡುವಾಗ ಲೈಟ್ ಆಗಿತ್ತು ನೀವೇನು ಎಕ್ಸ್‌ಪೀರಿಯನ್ಸ್ ಹೇಳೋದು ಬೇಡ ಕೈಯಿತ್ತಿ ಸಾಕು ಎಸ್ ನಾಶ್ಯ ಬೇಡ ನಾಶ್ಯ ಬೇಡ ಮೆಡಿಟೇಷನ್ ಮಾಡಿರೋರು ಖಂಡಿತ ಆಗಿರುತ್ತೆ ಸೋ ಕೈಯಿತ್ತಿ ಯಾರ ಹತ್ರ ಆಗಿದೆ ಓಕೆ ಥ್ಯಾಂಕ್ ಯು ಥ್ಯಾಂಕ್ ಯು ಒನ್ ಸೆಕೆಂಡ್ ಹೆವಿನೆಸ್ ಹೆವಿನೆಸ್ ಇನ್ ದ ಬಾಡಿ ಹೌ ಮೆನಿ ಫೆಲ್ಟ್ ಹೆವಿನೆಸ್ ಯಾರಿಗೆ ಭಾರ ಅನ್ಸ್ತು ಯಾರಿಗೆ ಮೈ ಭಾರ ಅನ್ಸಿದ್ದು ಯಾರಿಗೆ Hey, yes, yes. Did anybody, did anybody feel pains? Any pain anywhere? Okay. Somebody felt pain there. What about where you didn't exist? Your hands did not exist. Your body, your body, the, the, the head did not exist. You felt like you, know, you just disappeared. Did anybody feel that? No. How about your body rotating? Did anybody feel your body is rotating? you know whatever you read all of them on the screen are all are various meditation experiences we all go through something or the other sometimes many of us don't go through it but why we go through is that you know they're all are energy when we empty our mind we is receiving energy our pineal gland gets active and so we receive a lot of energy from this quantum field and thus we start experiencing that energy as a pain or a movement as a sensation or a vision you will start seeing insights you may start getting some messages for you tomorrow suppose you are preparing for your exams or you are preparing for a project suddenly you will get a message and say hey go and then open that book and then read this so that you know, that's how you actually get meditation helps you to 
become very efficient because it gives you clues. So meditation in many, many ways, so when, we, when you start practicing, you'll get all of these experiences. So Rakesh will announce a link. If you register to that link, we'll send you a free booklet. That booklet will explain, small booklet, 50 page booklet will explain everything about meditation that you can easily practice and then whatever you practice, we do it for three weeks, then you are absolutely changing and creating a great future for yourself. So thank you very much. I really thank Pyramid Valley, Patriji, who is the founder of Pyramid Spiritual Society's movement, who started this. Today, millions of people are practicing meditation. Shubha's entire great family is here who practice in meditation beautifully. And we wish that you, under your able guidance of the principal sir and then Mr. Vijay Kumar, that you also take on meditation from here and you experiment, explore for yourself. It's called experimentation. You have to explore. Don't believe. Whatever we said is don't believe it. You just have to practice it. That's what Gautama Buddha said. It, this technique came from Gautama Buddha 2500 years ago. He said, this is my truth. If you like it or not, you have to try. You try it, if you like it, then you keep it. Otherwise, you know, so something else will come. So that's how one wants to try. Don't, no blind belief. It's a very scientific process. So thank you very much, dear friends. Rakesh. PMC Kannada channel Anno, like Mari, share Mari, subscribe Mari, Matu Marisi. Ella Rigo Danyavadagal.